Good morning, everyone. So welcome to a new set of uh, coatings and coffee. Uh, what do we have in store for you today? Um, during the, the match trade show, which happened in November last year, we were on the Supiot forum where we have been discussing the, so to say, the, the, the room in the market for ceramic coating applications. And um, during that forum, I've basically met up with the female version of Richard Jennings in that industry, which is Claire Steele. Welcome, Claire. Hi, thanks for having me. Thanks for joining. So what we basically want to do, we want to have like a small 10 minute chat regarding ceramic coatings. And I first want to start with giving the floor to Mr. Jennings, if that's OK with you. Rich, yeah, I mean can you please enlighten us with your or Oxford Nobel's views on ceramic coatings within the Supiot industry. Yeah, of course I can. I mean, I mean, this is um, this is great. So me and Claire have talked about this a lot before, and I think the first thing is is um, all painters are sort of anti sort of ceramics or anything with PDMS in it because we wor worry about um, contamination, dimples, fish eyes, those sort of things. So that's the that's the sort of negative side of Rich coming out. But but we also know there's a place because uh, I think Claire will touch on this. Um, and Claire, please interrupt if you want to, where, um, you know, they they aid cleaning um, and, and those sort of things. So what I wanted to do is sort of talk about process and removal. Is it possible to remove? Um, what could we expect to see if we don't remove all of it? How does that affect the, the top coat? Um, so probably it's it's fair to hand over to Claire now to explain the sort of ceramics in themselves and maybe how it it introduced itself to yacht and and maybe Claire how you see these systems being managed. I, I will say one thing from my point of view: um, we never know if a vessel's got a ceramic on it or not as the as the paint manufacturer supplying. So it might be interesting to have your view on on sort of the removal process and how that all sort of works. If, if I may intervene very quickly, maybe it's good to give a very, very small introduction on what a ceramic is and what it does, because we are talking about it like the whole world knows, but maybe there are people who are still unfamiliar with ceramics. And uh, we see in the car industry like ceramics, nano coatings, all kinds of stuff. Can you give a small introduction, Claire? Yeah, OK. Um, good morning. Um, Basically, ceramics came from the um, train industry about 13 years ago, and we were part of the team who bought them from trains, advised by a paint surveyor, and tried to put it onto boats. Um, when I say tried, um, there was a lot of trial and error along the way. Um, there hasn't been a lot of research at this point done into ceramic coatings. Now, ceramic... Um, is a bit of a widely used term in the industry. Um, we use a ceramic, which is a polyxylazane based um, polymer, basically. And there's a number of different thicknesses of coatings and applications. However, it's become more um, apparent that companies are calling every coating a ceramic coating. Um, some of them are wipe on, some of them are rolled and tipped on. Some of them are yellow, some of them are see-through. Um, and basically they were brought into the industry to take over the polymers that we were putting on boats before that, which didn't have the longevity that was needed um, for boats doing dual seasons, busy charter boats. And as the boats have grown in size, it's become apparent that 100 metre boats don't wash down their hull every week because of access and logistics. They just can't do it. So... Um, people were looking for a, um, a solution um, that offered better longevity on the surface with easy cleaning properties and also really with the recessions that we've seen in previous years, something if they didn't have the time or budget to paint, then this was an answer to get them through two years until they could get into a yard to paint the boat. Um, over the years, um the industry has seen a lot of mistakes made by ceramic coatings and we are here to try and fix those and to identify what these issues are and how to minimize the risk so yeah 
Can, yeah. can I jump in, Case? Or, yeah, or I, don't, I don't know what you, you were th on. thinking. So this is um, so from from that point of view. Th and thanks, Claire. I just want to confirm from my side. We believe there's PDMS, which is a, a form of silicon that is a a carrier. In the, in the formulation, you mean? Huh? Yeah, in the in the formulation, which is a carrier, it helps the the application of it. Is that is that fair to say on yeah, on them? It, it it actually um it it it. It's there. It's present. We've done laboratory reports, and the reason it's in there is to help the flow rate. So, to all the people out there listening to this, if you've ever painted something where there's silicon contamination and you get these fish eyes or dimples on there, uh, this is what we're seeing with with some of the ceramics. So, I guess what we want to be sure of is the paint manufacturer, Claire, is the is the removal process. So, the two two questions here are: How do we know there's a ceramic on there? And how do we successfully remove it in your, and this is a general question, I know it's going to be difficult for you, but. It's, um, it, it is a difficult question to answer because I can talk about what my company does, yet I can't represent mm. the other companies that are applying ceramics. And whenever there's a ceramic applied, it needs to be documented. So it needs to have, um, when the project's finished, the captain needs to receive a GA plan with the marks marked on the GA plan, the areas that have ceramic. And this needs to be kept on file with a technical data sheet of the product. And it needs to be shared with yards and paint applicators and paint surveyors. There's no point going into a yard and trying to say you don't have a ceramic on um, because it, there's a lot of signs to show you do have a ceramic on. It depends what coating you've got on. If you've got a thicker coating on, very often you can see cut lines. Um, in certain lights, you can see brush marks. It's, it, there, are, there are a lot of signs that you can see if there's a ceramic on there. Um, with the thinner coatings, you can't really see it because it's normally between one and three microns. It's, you know, it's microscopic, but you can put water on the surface. Um, ceramic coatings are hydrophobic, so you can see how the water is beading instead of sheeting. Um, but really, every um, every application of ceramic, you need the documentation. And this is what's not happening in the industry. Companies are applying a ceramic coating. No one knows what's in the ceramic coating, where it is. And it's going into a yard to be painted and problems happen. Um, so yeah. we, we, we as a company document everything and... Um, and we give reports, day by day reports, which are handed over to the client. I also think this needs to come from shipyards, need to start yeah. asking for documentation when they've subcontracted to a, um, a ceramic coating applicator for the documentation. OK, so, um, OK, sorry, I keep jumping in. I don't mean to do that. You probably got ones there that you're thinking as well. But from so from our point of view, um, if we don't know there's a ceramic on there and you paint it, you can get fish eyes, you can get dimples. Uh, there could be an adhesion issue as well with the top coat. So it, it is problematic to top coats. However, if removed successfully and, and it's knowingly been done, then, you know, we can apply a primer and a top coat successfully on previously ceramic vessels so what you know where for me where does that where does that leave leave us you know so from a paint manufacturers they they want to guarantee from us that the paint is going to be good but we can't do that if there's a ceramic that may affect the finish so i believe there's probably a process or something that maybe we need to need to follow case. I don't know if you... I, I um, think in that in that way, there is always uh, a danger if it's not documented properly. That's actually yeah. maybe even the biggest risk. So in an ideal scenario, Claire, mm -hmm. how would your company approach this? We have got a proven removal system that we've spent a huge amount of money um, over the last two years investigating a removal system uh, with a lab that works with many paint applicators and we've got a proven removal system. Um, we can guarantee 99% that the ceramic is removed and they can actually do testing with an infrared machine to measure the levels of PDMS after our removal. And now going forward on all removal jobs, we are doing this system. So at the end of the removal process, which is documented, 
Um, we have the lab come in and they will measure the levels of PDMS on the surface after the removal. And we will hand over um, a report um, that certifies that we have removed the coating prior to the paint applicators coming in. And I think it's all about reducing risk. Um, and if we go through these stages, if we do the process and we document it and we do the um, the testing with the infrared machine, we're, we're reducing the risk. We have also briefly been touching upon that seven kind of questions process that you have developed, basically. I um, I developed these seven questions um, through 14 years of experience of doing what what I'm, what I'm doing. And these questions were developed because I believe that the problem starts from the from the decision makers when applying a ceramic coating. And I think mm -hmm. the industry was more educated on the questions to ask the ceramic coating applicators. They wouldn't incur the problems they're incurring when it comes to repainting. And these questions are super important to ask and not just take the ceramic coating applicators word for it. Um, research needs to be done. So terms and conditions need to be checked. The removal of the coatings, in my opinion, should be the first question that should be asked. And captains, management companies, owners, reps, they need to speak to paint applicators. They need to speak to paint surveyors and ask their opinion on the removal side of it. We get a lot of um, work from other ceramic coating companies with the yards that we work with in removing their coating. Um, and it amazes me that no one's asked these companies how to remove it. Um, when you ask the captains or the decision makers, they say, oh, the company said that it's easily removed. Well, we, we can all say that. Yeah. Um, why don't you go and ask the paint applicators who are painting your boat and see mm. what they're, or ask Axa Noble. And, or ask and, yeah. yeah. I think the thing that happens for us, Claire, is that if something's painted and there's ceramic still there, we get we get imperfections in the paint. And of course, the first thing people look at is the paint itself. But I think I think we all agree here that ceramics can cause paint defects, but they are they're they're manageable. So 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 in 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 a way, sort of summarising and sort of correct me if I'm wrong. What what we're saying is is that there is a place for ceramics if they're managed properly. Um, there's a, there's an area of responsibility to all of us involved in that if a ceramic is put on there um it needs to be documented it needs to go on a ga and for those of you that are unaware of a ga it's a general arrangement so this is effectively a schematic of the boat showing where the product's been put um and if we go into this with our eyes open knowing it's on there you're then saying there are ways of testing and removing via the ceramic applicators knowledge if that makes sense because it's they're the experts right in the in the ceramics not the paint manufacturer or the applicator and then i guess the applicator and or the paint manufacturer can go into this process with the knowledge that it's on there there may be a disclaimer that you may see the odd dimple or fisheye because we can't as you said i think you what did you gave a figure of 98 percent, or you could guarantee but there's always that to there's always going to be in whatever we do but at least our eyes are open right that we all know it's there i so found yeah. i found over the last three years since we've really started documenting everything that the clients of ours that have gone in for repainting and we've done the removal there's been no contamination and i actually give um the captain's contacts as a reference to other other captains and this is what captains need to do they need to start talking to boats that have been repainted using the ceramic they're intending on applying on the boat and start talking and doing research before agreeing to applying a, yeah. any coat on a boat. I mean, the amount of research that goes into a repaint, um, you know, you've it's, got huge. A, it's huge. But, you know, mm. no one seems to do the same research when it comes to ceramic coatings. And this is the problem, in my opinion. Um, yeah. I mean, if, if we don't know it's there, it causes problems. I think that's fair to say. But if you know it's there, it can be managed. And at least, as I say, everyone's eyes are open. So I, I don't know. I mean, I don't want to go on. I mean, in case I don't know where we go with this. We could no, probably I think, talk forever. I, I think but... that we have given quite a, 
a nice overview on uh, how we think it should be managed in that way. And we all know that a ceramic coating, ceramic applications is always sparking a lot of discussion within our industry. So I think that with this little bombshell that we have just created, I think we need to close down. And when people want to know more, please feel free to drop something in the comments so we can take that up and maybe create some further videos. Um, for now, Claire, I really want to thank you for your cooperation on this one. Pleasure. I think it's uh, it's teamwork that makes a dream work. Let's put it that way. Yeah, agreed. Thank Rich, you. thanks for your yes. time as well. You're welcome. And, you know, thanks, everyone. Let's put those comments in the box because we can think with these videos, right, Case, we can steer them to be more interesting or to give the information that people want. I think you're right. This is a bombshell, right? Um, <laughs> we've put it out there. Tell us what you need to know. Um, exactly. We've got friends and colleagues in the industry that are experts in these in these areas. You know, as the paint manufacturer, I'm not an expert in ceramics, but I, I know people that are. So we can we can steer you in the right direction to try and get the answers that you need. So thank you. I really appreciate your time. Perfect. See you next time. See thank you me. next time. Take bye -bye. care. Bye. bye.